they're all big games at this mm -hmm. point. But in terms of the health and fitness of the squad, how's everybody looking? How they pull up from the uh, glory game? Uh, good. Uh, you know, obviously it was our third game in eight days, so we had a very big week uh, in terms of matches. Um, but you know, we we've pulled up well. Um, Damien's the only one that obviously got a bit of a um, hurt his ankle, obviously in the last kick of the game there off the corner. Um, so he's the only one that we're um, just a bit careful with, but we expect him to be fine. So you expect him to travel with you? Yes. Too? Yes. So so. Different. He's a centre back. Saw Matt Bozanowski. The club is back in training. Mm -hmm. Is he going to be available at this point this season in case Damien can't go? Is he just more training now with an eye next season? Well, he hasn't done a full session with the team yet. No, no. So, um, but yeah, it's yeah, we're, we're happy to see him back uh, on the training pitch, and we're trying to um, yeah include him in certain drills and uh, get his confidence in his body and his foot. Uh, obviously, after the injury, but he's progressing well. And Jason Gary continues to be monitored with that hip. Mm. Is he looking more likely, less likely than Warren? Uh, yeah, it's just it's it's hard to say. You know, it's um, you know, we, we come out today, and if he has a very good session and he feels good, uh, fantastic. And and if he's a little sore this morning, then he will have an individual program, and um, and then obviously he won't travel. But you know, we're still waiting to uh, hear from the medical staff about that. I feel like maybe. All this happening at the wrong time of the season again, Damien and Jason. It's a bit like flashbacks at the start of the season where players, especially in the defence, kept going down. Uh, well, Damien, um, you know, we expect to be okay, but you know, we've got Jake Brimmer as well. So, you know, we've had Jason, Gary, and Jake Brimmer. You know, um, you know, Jason Gary has probably struggled throughout the whole year with his hip, and you know, Jakey's been out for you know, oh, quite a while now. And early in the year, we had. A lot of uh, different issues in terms of uh, injuries and and so forth, but um, you know we, we we certainly feel we can go to uh, Sydney and get a result. Uh, we're playing a lot better. Uh, we feel that there's more stability in the team right now, and uh, you know we just need uh, you know we need the the result to show that. There was obviously a bit of controversy late on in mm. the Glory game with a non penalty call. Have you received an explanation from? Australia's match officials department as to why it wasn't even VAR reviewed, let alone called. No, no, you, you don't. You don't get um, an explanation from them, uh, re those uh, decisions. Um, you know, we we obviously we asked for clarification. Uh, we haven't received any as yet, but uh, you know, I'm surprised it didn't go to VAR. Very surprised, but uh, you know, that's a decision was made. Maybe if that was in the 70th minute. Uh, it's given, or the VAR has a look, but 97th minute, um, you know, part of me is not really surprised uh, this season that that wasn't reviewed. So going up to Western Sydney to play them, Western Sydney have the best defence in the mm. competition, obviously, scoring goals, especially on the weekends, was difficult for you, you did everything right up until the final mm. moment, and you start banging in goals against a very difficult opponent. Well, we have to continue on from the performance. The the performance for a third match in eight days, and considering our situation and uh, the injuries we've had, I thought it was a fantastic display. Um, we just we just missed the uh, the goal, the decisive goal to take the three points. Uh, Wanderers, you know, are having a very good year. You know, it's uh, you know Mark's doing a fantastic job there, and you know the club will play finals for the first time in, in a very long time. So um, you know that's uh, I'm pleased for the football club and pleased for Mark, but uh, you know we know it will be tough. But uh, the way we're playing at the moment, uh, we certainly feel will give them a, a very difficult match, and uh, it's one that we feel we can win. Be a bit odd, wouldn't it? You will no longer be the last coach to have taken Western Sydney Wanderers <laughs> to the finals uh, in a few weeks' time. But looking at the Wanderers, especially. Yeah. Obviously, very strong defence, but at the other end, they they seem to have found sort of more attacking impetus mm. than they had at the start of the season. Brandon and Barello has moved a bit more centrally. He's having so, uh, a great season and he's in some fine form. How do you stop him? Well, it has to be a collective again. Um, you know, good players uh, will always have a moment in a match, and uh, they have some very good uh, personnel in the front third. Um, you know, they'll obviously be very, very keen to, to win after their last couple of results. Um, but, you know, that, that's a collective effort for us. Um, you know, we, we understand they're having a very good year and 
you know, we, we recently, certainly in the second half of the year, are, are playing a lot better and uh, a lot more consistent, a lot more good performances. Uh, we're competing with everyone, and I'm sure we'll do that again on Saturday. And, uh, you know, if we can just add, add, add goals to the performance that we had against Perth, um, you know, we, we can come away with a win, that's for sure. Do you feel that like the pressure's on Western Sydney? They need to win to keep their top two hopes alive. They're going to be at home in front of a large crowd. That I mean, you can still play finals, but you're also bottom, so the crowd's going to be expecting them to take the game on and win the game. Do you think the onus is on them, the pressure's on them? Um, I think, uh, yeah, possibly. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll obviously come out with, with the intent to win, but we will as well. And, um, you know, we're Melbourne Victory and, and we're going there to, to win the match. So uh, we have an expectation as well. Firstly, in our performance, and if a performance is, is good, once again, we give ourselves a chance to win. Do you feel like you get you know, other teams' best shot regardless of where you are on the table just because you are Melbourne Victory? Yeah, and that's how it should be. That's how it should be. Uh, you know, we're, you know, if you're a big club, then obviously uh, everyone lifts when they play you, and uh, we uh, have to expect that. The club's always had that expectation, and uh, particularly in the first half of the year, we didn't deal with that very well for, for many different reasons. But, um, you know, we're, we're playing like a, like a team that, that is Melbourne victory. Uh, it's just that we're not getting the results. And, uh, you know, and, and the table shows that, especially in the first half of the year. Uh, and now we have an opportunity to play a team that's in good form, that's fourth on the ladder, uh, fantastic venue, uh, be a good crowd, um, you know, and, you know, we want to get the win. And coming towards the end of the season, it's about the time when players start thinking about their futures. Do you have any re-signings or anything we should expect in the next couple of weeks? No, I think all all, uh, all of that will, will happen at the end of the year. So that's a club, club policy, no re-signing announcements until the end of the season? No, no, no club policy. Oh, okay. No, no, no club nothing policy. on your horizon? No, no, I wouldn't say that. I just... Um, you know, it's it's not a, a policy in, in how we make announcements or don't make announcements, but uh, at the moment, the the focus is on this game. Fair